Okay, good morning. Uh, today I, I would like to uh, talk about our uh, simple extension of a Fox space capital cluster method with singles and doubles that is usually used to describe systems with two valence electrons into the free va valence sector, meaning that uh, we will be able to describe systems with free valence electrons. Okay, this is the plan. Uh, a few words about non-dynamic and dynamic correlation effects. Uh, multi-reference approaches, effective Hamiltonian formalism, and then I would like to concentrate on the Fox space couple cluster method, basic concepts, frame vacuum, normal ordering of a uh, coupled cluster, expansion, valence universality, and uh, our intermediate uh, Hamiltonian reformulation of a Fox space couple cluster method is the next point. Uh, two valence uh, sector calculations with these basic approximations uh, that includes uh, one and two body cluster operators and then a, a, a simple extension of this two valence uh, method to the free valence sector and uh, some preliminary applications. Okay, so let me start with uh, description of non-dynamic and dynamic correlation. Uh, if we have several determinants that are uh, important in uh, our wave function and uh, they are necessary to give a good zero order description of the states under consideration and uh, we have to distinguish to types of uh, electron correlation, non-dynamic correlation and dynamic correlation and with this it's, uh, we, we can uh, uh, associate partitioning of our configurational space into two subspaces. <coughs> the first one is reference space that is spanned by several determinants that are important uh, in our wave function and uh, this, this reference space should correspond to the non-dynamic uh, co uh, correlation effects and the remaining part of the space, uh, the so-called orthogonal space, uh, uh, responsible for uh, dynamic correlation effects. And this, this first uh, contributions from the reference space must be uh, included exactly uh, for this orthogonal space contributions, we can uh, assume some approximate uh, description. Okay, and uh, uh, if we have the same uh, treatment of both uh, types of correlation effects, like in multi-reference CI, then uh, effective Hamiltonian approach is not necessary, but if we have a different and description of dynamic and non-dynamic correlation effects, then we have to use the so-called effective Hamiltonian formalism. And dynamic correlation uh, effects are uh, described by uh, the so-called weight operator and non-dynamic contributions are given by a diagonalization of the effective Hamiltonian. Uh, there is a standard uh, derivation of the effective Hamiltonian, but we'd like to present our alternative derivation that is based on similarity transformations. Uh, that's through our uh, uh, derivation of the intermediate Hamiltonian formalism, we use all the time similarity transformations and so this is a good uh, uh, way to start uh, uh, with uh, similarity transformation uh, for the effective Hamiltonian formalism. So let us consider similarity transformation of the Hamiltonian. Uh, 
uh, where we have this X operator, which, which X uh, action is restricted from the right to the uh, reference space and from the left to the orthogonal space. And this operator is uh, important, so uh, we have this simple expression for the transformed Hamiltonian. And we require uh, uh, this uh, similarity transformation to uh, lead to uh, one of diagonal, uh, of the di diagonal uh, part of the transformed Hamiltonian to be equal to zero. Uh, now, uh, uh, all eigenvalue problem of the Hamiltonian can be divided into two parts, and all eigenvalues can be obtained by separate diagonalizations of PP part of the transport Hamiltonian and QQ part of the transport Hamiltonian. Uh, to see this clearly, we can uh, consider the second similarity transformation that gives this second of diagonal part equal to zero. And it is easy to see that the second uh, uh, transformation uh, changes only this part of the transformed Hamiltonian. The remaining parts, three parts, are exactly the same like uh, uh, those uh, given by the first similar transformation. Okay, uh, if we are interested in uh, a subset of all eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian, we can consider this part only. And in this way, we obtain the standard effective Hamiltonian equations, equation for the effective Hamiltonian, uh, expression for the effective Hamiltonian, and equation for the X operator. This equation for X operator is quadratic in X uh, and, uh, ha uh, and um, has many solutions leading to different partitioning uh, partitionings of the eigenvalues in two uh, subsets, uh, sub subset given by the PP part of the transform Hamiltonian and QQ part of the transform Hamiltonian. Okay, let me uh, uh, now introduce a coupled cluster uh, expansion for the uh, one plus x operator, and we have two possibilities associated with different uh, choices for the Fermi vacuum. Hilbert space introduced by Izierowski and Monkost. Uh, we have cluster operate, operators uh, that are uh, reference function dependent. So we have many. Uh, many different Fermi uh, uh, vacuums. And the Fox space, balance universal uh, probe in which we have one Fermi vacuum. And uh, when we have one Fermi vacuum, then uh, our reference function must be uh, generated from the Fermi uh, vacuum by a set of um, creation operators. Uh, and then the X operator must excite outside the reference space. So uh, in S operator, there is a possibility of a prink of uh, particle hole uh, annihilation operators. And to avoid this normal ordered uh, exponential expansion was proposed by, by Offerman QMLA and um, in more elegant form by by uh, Lindgren. Okay, problems with uh, multi-reference couple cluster schemes, necessity of performing calculation for several states, poor convergence or divergence of uh, Jacobi type iterative schemes, uh, intruder states, multiplicity of solution, and so on. Uh, so we have uh, some variants of uh, these two approaches, state selective approaches, and also we have intermediate uh, Hamiltonian reformulations. And I would uh, like to emphasize uh, 
that these two first methods, uh, intermediate Hamiltonian Fox space capacitor method proposed by us and the uh, eigenvalue independent partitioning uh, version of uh, the Fox space capacitor method are especially important. Okay, basic con concept. Uh, uh, Fermi, uh, we, when we have uh, one particular picture of the system, we, we divide uh, all uh, orbital levels into holes and particles, and among particles we have uh, a subset of valence uh, orbitals, and some electrons are put on this uh, valence uh, levels. And that defines uh, our reference space. If we allow all possible occupations of valence electrons on these valence uh, orbitals, then we have a situation where our reference space is complete. Uh, excitation operators can be defined in such a way that we have uh, operator that doesn't have any annihilation uh, operators on the creation operators and then we have uh, also um, uh, oper uh, cluster operators with one annihilation operator with two annihilation operators and so on and then stands for the number of uh, annihilation operator in the second quantized uh, coupled cluster uh, Operators. Normal ordering is necessary to avoid contractions between uh, cluster operators, and e to the t can be put in front of this normal ordering because it doesn't have any annihilation operators, can be contracted with any other cluster operator. Okay. Uh, within our approximation with singles and doubles, for, for those who are familiar with uh, diagrammatic uh, techniques, um, uh, these operators can be expressed through graphs. These are graphs representing uh, cluster operators without uh, any annihilation operators, with one annihilation op with two annihilation operators. And at the two valence le level, our expansion looks like this. We have, we have products of cluster operators, but we don't have contractions uh, between cluster operators uh, because of this normal ordering. Uh, and this expansion looks like this in graphical form. Okay, let me speed up a little bit. Uh, we can define uh, the analog of this X operator leading to effective Hamiltonian formulation uh, for different uh, sectors. And uh, our similarity transform uh, Hamiltonian looks like this. It can be uh, seen as a sequence of two similarity transformations. One is uh, associated with these T operators remaining uh, cluster operators are mm, included in X and we have a, a, a redundancy problem that was solved by Mukherjee uh, that gives uh, this solution gives the method a Fox space mm, uh, character uh, because let me go to the previous uh, slide we see that the same uh, cluster operators, uh, different cluster operators can lead uh, to the same excited uh, function. And uh, we have uh, this redundancy problem uh, that we have too many uh, cluster operators. It's not possible to uh, determine all of them uh, in the Hilbert space, space with fixed number of electrons. So we, the idea was to go to uh, sectors with lower number of electrons. So we start with uh, equation where we have no valence electrons, then we have one valence electron, two valence electrons, and, and so on. 
these equations must be uh, solved in a hierarchical way, uh, starting with this uh, zero valence sector, one valence sector next, and T cluster amplitudes appear in this uh, one valence sector as known parameters, and in the two valence sectors, or previously calculated cluster amplitudes are known, and it is easy to see that uh, that uh, 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 perhaps I would say that, uh, this in a moment. That in fact, the expansion is linear in unknown cluster operators. But okay, these are equations. In, in a schematic way, graphical uh, representation of this e equation. This is one equations for one uh, variance sector. This, these are equations for two variance sector equations for cluster amplitudes, effective Hamiltonian, one particle part and two particle part in the two valence calculation. Okay. Problems, I, I've already mentioned about these problems, so it, it is uh, reasonable to uh, reformulate uh, this Fox space couple cluster method to avoid all these problems uh, in the spirit of intermediate Hamiltonians. Our X operator, correlation operator, is divided into two parts. Uh, uh, in one of these parts, we, we have a known cluster operator uh, that should be uh, calculated in the two variance sectors. All other cluster operators are known from the previous sectors. Okay, and this um, uh, excitation uh, generated by this uh, unknown cluster operator. Um, uh, leads to the some subspace of of the orthogonal space, and we call it uh, intermediate space. Okay, so uh, our x operator is divided into two parts. Uh, the z operator excites to the intermediate space, the y operator outside the intermediate space, and we can consider a sequence of two similarity transformations. And it is easy to see uh, that uh, uh, these two, op uh, we, we can define the uh, M uh, uh, node space, which is a sum of uh, reference space and the intermediate space. And we can see that uh, these operators have exactly the same eigenvalues because they are different through this second similarity transformation involving Z operator, and this transformation is uh, within the, uh, this uh, M0 space. Okay, so we call this uh, second operator the intermediate Hamiltonian, and eigenvalues given by the effective Hamiltonian are among uh, uh, eigenvalues of this intermediate Hamiltonian. Okay, these are uh, explicit, uh, not explicit, but uh, intermediate Hamiltonians uh, in one valence sector and, uh, sec uh, and two valence sector. One at the, uh, on the uh, one valence sector, we have simply the agonization of H bar. Uh, Two variance sector H bar matrix representation of H bar is, is the main part, and we have some extra dressing. Okay, this is the uh, diagrammatic representation of the effective of the intermediate Hamiltonian. We can see that it's very simple compared to equations uh, involving effective uh, intermediate Hamiltonian. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple compared uh, to the uh, effective Hamiltonian equations. Features two-step procedure is replaced with one uh, step procedure, which is diagonalization of effective Hamiltonian, of intermediate Hamiltonian that, that gives us eigenvalues and cluster amplitudes at the same time. Uh, we can get these eigenvalues one by one, 
there is no problem with multiple solutions. Intruder states, uh, alternative solutions are also accessible, and we have some form of simplification. How to get the effective Hamiltonian uh, 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 and the uh, cluster amplitudes from our intermediate Hamiltonian calculations? We, we have to calculate several eigen uh, values and corresponding uh, eigenvectors. Eigenvectors we can use to construct this, uh, use as a columns and to construct this matrix. Uh, here we have uh, coefficients associated with the reference space. Here we have coefficients associated with the intermediate space. And the operator is simply obtained by multiplying vi uh, by the inverse of this uh, v naught matrix. Effective Hamiltonian can be obtained from these eigenvalues by using this uh, v naught uh, matrix. So everything what is characteristic for the effective Hamiltonian approach can be reproduced from our intermediate Hamiltonian results. Okay, I don't have too much time. So the, the, uh, the effective Hamiltonian can be uh, expressed through its zero, one, and two particle parts. This is at the uh, CCSD uh, level for uh, the two valence sector. So we have zero, one, and two particle part contributions. And uh, due to valence universality, uh, 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 this uh, um, one, uh, zero, one, and two particle contributions we have also in the free valence cal calculation. The only uh, part that is missing is the free body part. So our proposition was to uh, include uh, uh, the lowest order uh, estimate of this free particle part. Uh, and uh, this uh, estimation is of the second order, and the uh, Fox space couple cluster method with singles and doubles uh, at the two valence level is also exact up to the second order. So that makes our approach uh, consistent. And uh, uh, what we have at the three valence le level is one, zero, one, and two particle contributions to the effective Hamiltonian given by the uh, two valence uh, calculation and these three particle uh, contribution uh, containing the lowest order, uh, um, uh, the lowest order part. But it, it looks like this, these three guys are given by by the uh, two valence calculations and they are su supplemented with this three particle part that is uh, expressed through these two extra terms. Okay, this is pretty simple, uh, simple extension, uh, very, uh, very easy to implement and some numerical results. We have excitation uh, energies for nitrogen. Uh, we can uh, uh, compare our results with experiment and with uh, equation of motion coupled cluster results. You can see that quite good agreement with the experiment. And also for the second excited state, okay, better than, uh, this uh, excitation energy given by equation of motion. Uh, we can extend uh, uh, enlarge the number of active orbitals from three to four, and we can describe one extra excited state. state. Uh, agreement is again uh, quite good. 
for um, uh, phosphorus. Uh, the ground, uh, the, the first excited state, very uh, quite good uh, excitation uh, uh, energy, better than given by equation of motion. Uh, 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 for the second ex excited state, the uh, description is a little bit less uh, satisfactory, but still not bad. We have different basis sets, quite large. Okay, and it is possible to compare our results also with uh, results obtained by, by Caldor uh, for several uh, at the free variance valence uh, level for, for several atomic systems. And we can see that three body clusters are not uh, very important because um, uh, mean average uh, error for all these uh, ionization potentials and excitation energies given by our method is uh, 0.17. Uh, when triplets are included, we have 0.14, so the, the difference is not big. We have also two applications to the molecular system, uh, lithium uh, carbide. We have uh, equilibrium geometries. Um, uh, we have uh, harmonic frequencies and uh, diabetic excitation energies. Uh, there are no experimental values, which so we can compare uh, our results with the results of our theoretical uh, studies. And the comparison for the ground state is quite good. For excited uh, stay uh, is not so satisfactory, uh, but uh, the uh, adiabatic excitation energy is there is no practically discrepancy between our results uh, and results given by Martyr of RCI. Okay. could you jump to the conclusion? Sorry. Ah, thank you. Uh, one more table uh, for sodium uh, carbide. Uh, situation is uh, similar. We have experimental value. We can compare our results with one experimental value and the comparison is quite satisfactory. Okay, let me jump to the conclusions. Uh, we propose a simple extension of the uh, Fox space coupled cluster methods to the free variant sector. Uh, we use our intermediate Hamiltonian version all uh, effective Hamiltonian results can be reproduced from the intermediate uh, Hamiltonian calculations. And uh, zero and one, uh, zero, one and two body components of the effective Hamiltonian obtained in the two valence calculations are supplemented with the lowest order estimate of the free body terms. And then uh, the approach can be uh, applied to the uh, systems with free valence electrons. The approach is exact to the second order. And our, uh, sorry, our preliminary uh, application so that the basic of approximate scheme is capable to provide quite accurate results, not only for atomic, but also for molecular systems with free valence electrons. Okay. Thank you. And now we have time for quick question or comment. Do we have? Okay, I don't see. So uh, thank you, Leszek, once again. And